Since humanity built boats and ventured out into the open sea, humans have had to deal with waves. But not all waves are made equal. There are sea monsters, also referred to as killer waves. Scientists have finally recorded one of these incredibly unpredictable waves, which is helping us understand them better. What are killer waves? Why do so many ships go missing in the Bermuda Triangle? And why are scientists preparing for a cataclysmic tsunami that can end life on Earth? Let's find out. Rogue waves are steep-sided waves that are more than twice as large as nearby waves and are quite unexpected, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Scientists call them extreme storm waves, but they're known to some mariners as freak waves or killer waves. The majority of people who have survived encounters with these terrifying waves called them walls of water, where the waters meet is where rogue waves typically occur. It frequently occurs when you have a crossing sea or waves that are coming from several different directions and are very difficult to predict. Rogue waves happen frequently. Sometimes, particularly if they approach the ship from the bow, ships don't even realize they've come across them. Last year, a cruise ship traveling around Antarctica was struck by a rogue wave that killed one person and injured several others. This area is known for its 30-foot seas and hurricane-force winds. A ship's captain is unlikely to be able to avoid a rogue wave because they develop so quickly. It would strike in a matter of seconds even if you had your radar on and were staring at it at that precise moment. On the other hand, a stretch of ocean off the southeast coast of the United States has a long-standing reputation for being terrifying. Ships traveling through its turbulent breadth vanish into thin air. Flights that are directed over water disappear from radar sensors. These strange events have sparked rumors of paranormal activity, extraterrestrial kidnappings, and a region that exists outside the regular parameters of physical reality. It's rumored that the Bermuda Triangle is a haunted location. Of course, that is only one interpretation of the events. A number of high-profile and still unsolved naval and aviation disappearances have occurred in the Bermuda Triangle. However, it is highly unlikely that those catastrophes were caused by anything malevolent as opposed to the logical intersection of environment and statistics. Nevertheless, numerous individuals have put up credible scientific explanations for the disappearances of ships and aircraft in the Bermuda Triangle over time. After all, the ocean is a perilous area where accidents still frequently happen. Safety is never guaranteed in the North Atlantic storm-battered waters. The most popular definition of the Bermuda Triangle places it between Miami, San Juan, Puerto Rico and the island of Bermuda. It covers a vast area, the North Atlantic Ocean, hundreds of thousands of square miles in total. Ships from the Gulf of Mexico and the East Coast also have a lot of traffic in this area. In a 1964 article in the pulp magazine Argosy, which connected a few local disappearances, the Bermuda Triangle was given its name. Although it made much of the region's mysticism, the deadly Bermuda Triangle did not provide any explanations for the events. The article describes the loss of a flight of bombers during a practice run in 1945 and the disappearance of the USS Cyclops, a Navy supply ship, as well as one of the search and rescue planes dispatched after them. These and additional instances are now included in the Bermuda Triangle's legend. These tales are frequently combined to allude to the possibility of something dangerous lying beneath the Atlantic Ocean's surface. Over the years, a variety of more rational explanations for the phenomenon, from errant magnetism to deadly bubbles, have been advanced in addition to the supernatural ones. Some of the mystery may be explained by the volume of traffic that passes through the Bermuda Triangle. Accidents are bound to occur more frequently in areas with high ship traffic than in areas with lower activity. It is not difficult to understand why ships might occasionally sink there, 
combined with the fact that the Bermuda Triangle is frequently swept by hurricanes. Magnetism is a prominent explanation for the Bermuda Triangle. Compasses typically don't point precisely north because the magnetic north pole of the Earth differs from its geographic north pole. Compasses are only completely accurate along the so-called agonic lines, which align magnetic and geographic north. Near the Bermuda Triangle, one agonic line extends from Lake Superior through the Gulf of Mexico. According to one idea, sailors may make errors when extremely close to the agonic line that leads them astray, because they are typically used to correcting for a mismatch in their compass readings. Navigational mistakes could result in boats running aground on undiscovered shoals in the Caribbean Sea's frequently shallow waters, due to the island chain's widespread distribution. Another idea suggests that a large-scale magnetic anomaly, or area where the Earth's magnetic field lines are bent and twisted, may exist in the Bermuda Triangle. This too could result in navigational errors. However, as several commentators have pointed out, there is no proof that the Bermuda Triangle is home to extraordinary magnetic disturbances, as can be seen by looking at a magnetic map of the area. More recently, some scientists have proposed that the huge bubbles created from seabed methane deposits may be the cause of the ship sinkings in the Bermuda Triangle. The area's seafloor is known to hold sizable gas pockets that could suddenly leak, converting the water into a foamy soup that can swallow ships. Large undersea craters close to Norway were probably formed by the same event. There is no proof of a recent methane emission from the region near the Bermuda Triangle, despite the fact that the mechanism itself makes sense. According to Bill Dillon of the US Geological Survey, the last time something similar occurred in the area was about 15,000 years ago. The existence of the rogue waves we previously addressed is another theory for the Bermuda Triangle that makes sense on paper unexpectedly forming and rising two or even three times above neighboring waves are these enormous waves. According to Vice, British researchers simulating the effects of rogue waves greater than 100 feet tall on ships as part of a Bermuda Triangle probe employed lab and computer simulations. One researcher hypothesizes that ships that were sufficiently long may become stuck and suspended between two wave peaks with nothing supporting them from below and split it in half. But even though rogue waves can absolutely break or capsize a ship, we don't have any solid proof linking them to any of the maritime mishaps in the Bermuda Triangle. The Bermuda Triangle is not recognized by the American government and is not depicted on any official maps. Additionally, neither the Coast Guard or the Department of Defense has ever accorded the region or its tales any unusual significance. After taking into consideration the volume of traffic that passes through, there is also no evidence to imply that the region experiences greater rates of marine or aviation disasters than any other place on the globe. Perhaps we, rather than the ocean, hold the key to understanding the Bermuda Triangle. Our perceptions are frequently skewed toward peculiar or otherwise memorable events, making it difficult to properly account for statistical inconsistencies. For instance, we're more likely to recall unusual events like a ship vanishing mysteriously rather than just any ordinary event. And if something catches our interest, it can serve as the starting point for more study. It's a type of phenomenon known as a frequency illusion, sometimes known as the Bader-Meinhof effect. In essence, if we become familiar with something, we tend to notice it more frequently around us. This can make us believe that something we've noticed is spreading out quickly when, in fact, we're merely becoming more aware of it. There has never been any proof that the area is any more dangerous than anywhere else, regardless of the psychological or other factors that ultimately gave rise to the tale of the Bermuda Triangle. Would a tsunami from Boston to Miami be able to wipe out everything? Would we have any hope if it did? 
Known as the lovely island, La Palma is known for its white and sand beaches and black volcanic soil. As far as the eye could see, the night sky seemed vast and full of stars. But here, beauty is merely superficial. The Combre Vieja volcano is perched on La Palma's western coast, looking like a pot of water about to boil over. Its most recent major eruption occurred more than 50 years ago, yet everyone is aware that the beast within will eventually come to the surface. Tremors are the first sign. On kitchen tables, glasses jangle while picture frames slant left and right. Since they're on an island, tourists to La Palma dismiss the jelly sensation as sea legs. However, the locals hold their breath because they know better. When it happens, ash and lava spew from the volcano's mouth in the form of a huge sigh. Nobody could have foreseen what would occur next. The volcano's western side fractures and fissures as internal steam pressure develops and presses against its walls. The Atlantic Ocean joyfully swallows every rock, stone and pebble as they tumble into its azure depths as the western slopes of the mountain completely breaks off due to excessive pressure. The water's tranquil ebb and flow changes to furious splashing and crashing as the ground rumbles and it starts to slosh around. The waves intensify and they continue to expand. To the untrained eye, it appears as though the heavens have unleashed a watery curtain because the volcano's collapse has somehow generated a wave that extends upward. The mega tsunami is also moving quickly. As it rushes away from La Palma's coast and toward the United States, the entire 3,000 feet of water roars. La Palma, the westernmost of the Canary Islands, is around 8 to 10 hours flight time from the eastern side. The only good news is that there is a window of opportunity for residents to leave. However, disorder quickly spreads and soon the roads are jammed with cars as terrified families try to flee inland from Boston to Miami. One more silver lining, the wave shrinks from a stunning 3,000 feet to a meager 160 feet as it travels across the Atlantic. The wave crashes, washing sand onto beaches and filling bays. Water rushes inland 10 miles across the whole eastern seaboard, putting coastal properties at risk. Numerous hotels are demolished and houses are also devastated. Chemical factories that once produced goods close to the coast now release their hazardous waste into the water. Each year, beaches all along the coast generate billions of dollars in visitor revenue. Due to the quantity of oils and solvents spilled, it appears that tourists may not be able to return for decades. Additionally, 29% of the population of the United States resides on the East Coast. Their homes have been demolished and their cities have been inundated, forcing them to flee. Not everybody was able to leave in time. That was merely an appraisal of the potential outcomes. Although the world is not ending, it certainly feels that way. Mega tsunami in La Palma is undoubtedly going to be a disaster. The worst part is that it's not impossible. A mile-long crack was made on La Palma's east side in 1949 when the Combre Vieja volcano erupted near the island's coast and triggered an earthquake. The volcano's west side then fell six feet into the Atlantic Ocean due to the force of the fracture. It has stayed in this posture ever since, with an estimated 1.5 trillion metric tons ticking away like a time bomb. The western half of the volcano might fall into the ocean and fully produce this mega tsunami scenario if conditions are right and the volcano erupts with enough force, the study found. There is a lot of water in La Palma. According to the theory, hot magma will eventually reach this water, change it into steam, and then the steam will split the mountain during a future eruption. A wave the size of a mega tsunami may be produced by a landslide of this size. 
predicting if or when the continent will actually slide into the Atlantic is the challenging part. It is difficult to anticipate and prepare for a mega tsunami. On a smaller scale, tsunamis are uncommon enough in their own right. However, a situation like that is unlikely to occur out of the blue. Researchers will be able to predict a potential calamity thanks to the build-up of tectonic and volcanic activity beforehand. When it comes to an event like this and the size of the potential wave, we don't think we could really protect against it. There are ways to prepare for a typical tsunami. The good news is that it would take between 5 and 6 hours for any tsunami activity brought on by La Palma landslide to reach the American shore. The US Tsunami Warning Center would start monitoring its buoy network and would start sending out signals, maybe allowing locals ample time to move to higher ground a few hours to the west. Although it would be difficult to foresee and even more difficult to reduce the risk of a mega tsunami on La Palma, coastal landowners can begin by purchasing flood and storm surge insurance, strengthening structures with wind and water resistant materials, or installing water sensors. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind blowing videos about space.